Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by the channel. Now I've got a pretty fun pattern for you tonight. This one is the X2 Caddis. If you remember the X Caddis, Craig Matthews came up with that one in the early 1980s. Now Craig is a pretty famous, well-known fisherman and conservationist. He runs Blue Ribbon Flies out in West Yellowstone, Montana. Now we tied the X Caddis on here before, but this one, the X2 Caddis, or the improved X Caddis, is slightly different. It still has the trailing shuck, but it's got a, a little bit more Z-line under the elk hair wing, and then it's got a, a dubbed hair for a head. Now you have a couple of options for how you tie this thing. A lot of the videos I saw out there online had the body made out of a little bit of synthetic, just some kind of green olive uh, dubbing mix. And then David Klausmeyer had it in his favorite flies as a just green hairs mask. So I'm gonna do a mix of both. I'm just gonna take both of those and mix it in today's fly. But it's not a very difficult pattern. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's the X2 caddis in the vise. I'm gonna be tying this on a size 12. It's a 1X long dry fly hook. And I am using tan 70 denier UTC. I'm gonna lay a base all the way back down to the start of the bend. And the tail on this guy, or is it a tail or is it a trailing shock? I guess you could call it either. Amber Z-Line. Some Antron, this is one of the, the strands of the very thick Z-Line type strand. So I'm gonna catch this in with a couple of wraps right here. Okay, just keep it on the top. And then I'm gonna go ahead and snip this front off. We do have a buggy body, so it's not a real big deal if you have a little bit of a bump right there. Now the tail, or the, the shuck on this, is about a half of a shank length. That looks fine right there. Now here is an option. Klaus Meyer book did not have this crystal flash, this pearl flash rib, but the other references I've seen to it did. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put one in. It doesn't hurt. It will keep it a little bit, you know, bind this body in a little bit more. Now here's where a couple of the other patterns differ as well. What do you dub the body with? Klaus Meyer just said, you know, straight up green hairs mask, which oddly enough, I have one right here. Not everybody's gonna have this, but a lot of the recipes just called for an Antron dubbing, something like this right here. So I'm gonna do, just make a mix, kind of the best of both worlds. Here's some of this Antron dubbing, and then I'm gonna just pull out from right under the ear, you know, fr from this hairs mask, several little fibers, so what I end up with is, you know, two pieces kind of like this. And it's hard to see, this is green and it's a green background. So I'm just mixing these up in my fingers here and then I get something that looks about like that. Can you see that? That's pretty green. Okay, now wax on my thread and I'm just going to dub this on here fairly tight, but we're taking it up about two thirds of the, of the body. So you might need a, a couple of inches of a noodle here. So let's see, I'm gonna leave a little bit of bare thread right there so I can get back so I'm not laying dubbing until I'm back at the, at the shuck there. Now I can tighten it up a little bit. And I need to go a little bit more forward than that. That is about where I want. And it's a little buggy, but that's fine. We want it to be a little bit buggy. I'm gonna counter wrap this flash right up through here. Just gives it a little bit more stability and a little bit of flash to it. Not that a whole lot of flash is needed because we've got, we're gonna have two components of the Z line, which is a little bit flashy in itself. So two or three or four good wraps to get that caught in right there. Now here's something you can do if, if your body is not buggy enough, and I, I like mine to be a little buggier than this, I wanna pull some of these hairs mask fibers out of this, just along the bottom. 
give me a little bit more bugginess right there. Now, one more piece of Zelon Antron, this time white. So about the same diameter as we used for that shuck. I'm going to, remember we've, we've got, I'm gonna catch it in a little farther back because we've still got some elk hair and then a big head on it. So I'm just gonna catch this in with a pinch wrap right there. Make sure I'm still coming off the top. Okay, that looks fine. Now, snip everything off the front. And on the back, just a body length. And it'll bounce back a little bit, so maybe do it a little bit more than the body length, but not as long as a tail. So that's gonna be fine right there. You got a little bit of crazy sticking out I did not cut. Let's go ahead and cut that. Okay, now for the wing. Elk hair, deer hair, if you have it, just something like you would make an elk hair caddis with. Put it in your stacker. Give it a few good stacks, a few good wax. See if you get it straight. I think this is gonna be straight enough right here. Now let's pull it out and take a look at it. Okay to the back of the bend. It's longer than that, that underwing, but not as long as the, the shuck. So what I'm gonna do, that's where I'm gonna catch it in, where my thread is hanging, measure my length, and then just grab it right there. And I'm gonna reach in here and snip it right behind the eye. And if I'm lucky, I won't have too much to trim after I catch it in. So I haven't let go of it yet. And I've got one wrap, now two wraps. It's gonna flare up, see that? But how we take care of that, you just kind of pull it down and a few medium wraps going back. Pull that down a little bit and now we can do our tighter wraps up here and just zigzag it through here and bind these butt ends of this elk hair down. Now if you need to, get in there and trim them with your scissors. I don't think we need to right now because we're putting a big buggy head on it. Maybe that is part of the, the two. The improved X caddis called the X2 caddis is it's got a big head on it. And I'm gonna do what Klausmeyer did on this one, just brown rabbit hair's mask. And I'm, I'm pulling it right from the base of the ear. Got a lot of wax on my thread right there. Now here's some fuzz from the, the hair's mask. And just put it on here, kind of tight. It's still gonna be buggy no matter how tight you wrap it on here. And it might take you a couple applications, but start it right behind that, that wing. And uh, I want it a little bigger than that. So let's do another application, uh, maybe about how much we just put on it. Okay, just dub this on here, and I got a little bit more spiky fibers in this one, but that's kind of good. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger, and yeah, pull that one out right there, okay. All right, I like that head, that one's gonna look fine. Just push it back, make some room for a whip finish here. And on this one, it would be kind of a mess if you're trying to put some head cement on there. So I'm gonna do the old super glue trick. Just put a drop right here within the first half inch of this thread. And doesn't take much. You see I got a little bit on right there. And those wraps, that's what's going to, well, some people will just take a couple wraps right there, or you can just go straight into your whip finish and you gotta do it quick. I'm gonna do four turns right there. If you let it sit for, you know, 10 seconds, that super glue will start setting on your thread and then you won't even be able to pull your, your wet finish through. So when you do that with the super glue or Zapigab or whatever, just be quick about it. So that's it, the X2 Caddis. Pretty cool pattern, really buggy, pretty fun to tie. And from what I hear, it can be very effective. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.